thank you so very much for taking some time out of your day to spend with me. I am Joy, and I would like to extend a warm welcome to all the new subscribers to this community. We are so honored to have you here, and it is my sincere hope that you are met by a loving and supportive community as you continue to journey forward. To all the returning subscribers, welcome back family. I appreciate you all so very much. Today I want to talk to you about the ultimate sheep in wolves clothing, the narcissistic therapist. As noble as a career as therapy is, it's important that the client is able to feel secure enough to enable them to open up and share what they are experiencing as well as feeling. Some people may opt not to see a therapist, but sometimes they rather see a psychologist, a counselor, a pastor, a spiritual advisor, or even a life coach. But I would like you, I want you to consider all of these professions, even though I may only just refer to therapists throughout the video. It applies to all of these professionals. You see, the therapist is naturally in an incredibly powerful position because it's the client, the patient, who is required to tell everything to the therapist. And the therapists are able to decide when to speak, what to say, when to confront, or when to remain silent. While it's very true that many will seek this career to make a difference in the lives of their clients, for the most part, the intent is to help the clients overcome abuse as well as trauma. However, we are well aware that narcissists are in every aspect of society. They are in every part of society. So it should be no surprise to many of you to know that the narcissists actually seek out vulnerable people so naturally. This line of work makes them feel like they're a kid in a candy store. Everywhere they look, there is narcissistic supply and they get to experience a prolonged sugar rush as they systematically inflict insidious abuse on the very vulnerable people that see, seek them to help them. They re-traumatize their clients. It's one thing when you're already experiencing pain, anguish, trauma at the hands of a narcissist that you experience in your life, but to then be taken advantage of by the person that you go to seek help from is devastating. Narcissists will get into this field for all the wrong reasons. And, you know, it's because they're, they're of a depraved mind that it's okay for them. Remember, they're highly entitled beings and they are filled with the innate desire to suck their supply dry. They are wolves in sheep's clothing and they take great delight in having power and control of their targets. They abuse gaslight, project, invalidate, terrorize their clients. They, are most, they most definitely take toxicity and invalidation to the next level. It's heartbreaking. Please do not mistake in a therapist or a professional um, who is just uninformed or ill-informed as the same as this serpent. You see, they're just ill-informed. They don't know. But this beast is fully aware of what they are doing. They're not just malicious, but they're intentional. Their sole agenda is to enable the abusive behavior to continue. They minimize the client and they're there for all the wrong reasons again. It's all to support their own agenda. And if this isn't the diabolical and the work of the enemy, then honestly, I really don't know what is. You see, the ill-informed therapist can empathize, they can learn, they can grow and even evolve. However, the narcissistic therapist is callous. They lack empathy, they lack remorse and are in a powerful position. And they have the perfect target right in front of them. Oftentimes, they participate in the emotional and psychological abuse that is inflicted by the clients or inflicted on the clients, should I say, by their narcissistic partners. They participate in it. They take great pleasure to continue this abuse cycle. 
So I really want to talk to you today about being diligent about who you seek to help you navigate your journey. You know, it's great to check out the credentials of the person that you go to, but it's even better for you to be sure that you seek out peer reviews. What do their coworkers say? What do those people that are in the same line of work as them say? And another step is to get client reviews. What do the people who they have worked with say about them? Because it's one thing to have a good name, but it's another thing to be known to have integrity, compassion, empathy, and be effective at what they do. So feel free to ask, ask who you're speaking to, ask who you are going to help for. Like, look, this is an investment that you're making. It's your time. Time is one of those resources that we cannot get back. It's your money. It's your hard earned money. And it doesn't matter even if this is coming from insurance or whatever, it's still money that is paid and it's yours. So don't just give it, don't just hand it out just to be handing it out. Make sure that it works for you, that it's beneficial to you. You are allowed to interview your therapist, your life coach, your counselors, your spiritual advisors. You are allowed. Otherwise, how would you know that they're a good fit for you? And depending on how they respond to your interview or request for an interview, you have your answer right there. If they have nothing to hide, then they have nothing to hide. Be sure that they are compatible with your needs. They should be at a minimum be trauma informed, ethical, empathetic, knowledgeable about emotional as well as narcissistic abuse. But above all, they must have integrity. Ladies, those of you who would rather seek counsel from a male, that's fine. But be very sure that they remain professional at all times. You do not want to make an investment in a predator. So today I'm just going to share five points with you. Um, to help you look out for narcissistic traits in those whom you seek help from. I'm sure that together we can come up with more traits. So if there's anything that I miss out that you feel is important and that we must all look out for, please add them to the comments. The more, the more who share, the more we can become aware, the more we can learn, the more we can protect ourselves. And for those people who are not sure, then they have the comments to look at. So please continue to engage and be active. It's about helping each other so that we can grow together and expose these serpents for what they are. The first point that I have here is that they violate boundaries. Narcissists generally do not like boundaries and they always try to push you outside of your comfort zone. So if your therapist is continually overstepping your boundaries, consider that a red flag. And remember that you don't owe an explanation for wanting to leave or no longer participating or working with them. You don't owe them that. They should never make any sexual advances. Affairs with clients violate the code of ethics. You should expect privacy at all times as well as, as, well as confidentiality. You should, you're allowed autonomy to your emotions and you should be able to freely participate in your journey of healing. Failure to respect your boundaries results in an enmeshment. It creates an environment for clients to become dependent. You should be able to verbalize what you are feeling freely without fear of provocation. They should be, they should do more listening than talking and they should not insert themselves in your life. They violate boundaries by exploiting clients financially. My second point is that they lack empathy and that allows them or that creates an environment for them to victim blame. You can be sure that they are void of any empathy. They have none. So it's, it, it costs them nothing to mock their clients. They're also known to provoke their clients by invalidating them, insulting them, or even just plain threatening them. The client, you know, sometimes it results in the client forgiving 
their abuser, forgiving the narcissist, forgiving the person that they went there for in the first place, and then returning back to the abuser, all because the therapist gaslighted them, invalidated them, made them feel insignificant, belittled them. And another thing that they do is that they violate childhood trauma or even a child's trauma. And this is something that I experienced and it made me really despise therapy and just made me feel like, you know what, why even bother? Why should I even try and get help? And this was about my childhood trauma. I blamed myself even more for something that was outside of my control. I was not guilty of what happened to me. That was the perpetrator, not my fault. But I struggled with this for so long afterwards. So please be very mindful of this. They will try to rationalize your experience. And that is a red flag by itself. The third point that I want to highlight for you today is that they join forces with the narcissist in gaslighting. And you know, this is just further proof of how dem demonic this work is or this the, these serpents are because demons work in tandem. Let's not forget that abusers always support abusers. And so they end up smearing the target and labeling them as the predator. So naturally, a narcissistic therapy, a therapist, should I say, will happily engage in gaslighting their clients. Narcissists are able to see themselves in each other. Remember, spirits recognize each other, and so they use their authority to misdiagnose, gang up on clients in couples therapy, lie on behalf of the narcissist. They are just willing to roll in the mud with the original predator to continue to do demonic work. The fourth, the fourth point that I want to highlight here is that... Um, in typical narcissistic fashion, they isolate you from your outside support system. In a healthy situation, additional voices should be, uh, should be encouraged as well as supporting roles. However, narcissistic therapists are just like cult leaders. It's a one-man show. They want total control over their clients. Second opinions are discouraged, and the thought of any additional resources that facilitate the healing process are strongly discouraged. They teach their clients to be helpless professional victims, just like themselves. The fifth and final point that I have here is that they are condescending. They, of course, have to have the final word in any discussion. They believe that they are superior over all the other, over all other authority, should I say, and they misuse the authority that they have. You find that they are incredibly critical towards their clients because they they actually desire for their clients to be to be dependent on them for validation, while they continue to point out the shortcomings. They bully. They belittle. They shame their clients, and all this results in the need for approval from the very person who is invalidating them. It instills a, self, a sense of self-doubt, and ultimately it delays the healing process. Sometimes it totally stunts it. But at the end of the day, it re-victimizes the client. It's so important. It is so important that you are very careful about who you are entrusting your journey to. I can't stress this to you enough. Sometimes something sounds good to you. You know, I want to say that, you know, sometimes arm candy can be good for you, right? It looks good on your arm, but it's, it's toxic to the very core. And this is what this is about. You don't have another life to live. This is it. And so be very vigilant with who you are trusting in this journey, where you are going, and those of you who are taking your children to therapy, sit down with the therapist first. Be sure that this is the right person. And any feeling that is unsettling to you, take that as a sign. Take it as a warning. I would rather be overzealous than make a mistake and allow this type of serpent, this sheep, or this wolf in sheep's clothing to oversee my child's, you know, my child's healing journey.
because it, it prolongs it, it makes it worse. They inflict more pain, more confusion, re-traumatizing. So please, please do the work. It costs you nothing to ask for referrals, both professionals or peer, um, peer reviews, as well as client ones. Validate or you know verify their certifications so that you know that this person is equipped to help you. You don't want to go through this more than once, you know? So I just wanted to talk to you about this today because it's something that's been weighing heavy on me. And, you know, um, I don't want to see you hurt anymore. I want to see you walk in healing. You know, healing looks good on you. And so I'm trying to see you look good all the time. So I'm looking forward to see what other points that you will raise in the comment section so that we can continue to inform one another and ultimately grow together. So until the next video, take care of yourself and take care of each other.